From between the logs, Greg. That's all she wrote. Oh, First one of the year, boys. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pretty sure that's a gobbler down right there. Had a good quartering away shot at him. It looked like it hit him perfect and that he just, I'm guessing he's just down over this berm right here. But that got tricky real fast. Welcome back guys. Today's video will be our final turkey hunting episode of the 2022 spring. We really appreciate y'all following along. The 2022 turkey tour is not over yet. We're gonna continue hunting through the month of May and we will just save all that content and bring it to you next February and early March when we're all getting fired up for the 2023 spring turkey season. We can't thank you guys enough for tuning in with us this spring and for helping us out with turkey research. At the end of today's video, I'll give you an update on where we're at with that. On the previous video, we got to hunt with our friends from the Untamed and help our buddy Curl harvest his first West Virginia gobbler. That night, Josh and I roosted a turkey in a great spot for Ted. The next morning, Ted, Greg, and I scaled up the side of a mountain to get above this bird, but with the steep terrain, we were having trouble hearing him to pinpoint his location. We had to move around the ridge top, calling into the creek bottom from multiple angles before we were finally able to strike this turkey. <laughs> is he across or is he straight down? A little bit across up where that, basically where that drainage starts right there. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, he ain't gonna come up through this. But I, I bet you that's what he's doing, because there's a, there's a finger of hardwoods over there, it looks like, from on X, it's on that point. I bet you they're curling around that and then taking that up and then getting on this ridge. Let's see if we can get closer to him. There's an albino deer down there. Hmm? Albino deer right there. See that white spot? Right down there, just to the right of where he gobbled. Oh, cool. That's freaking sweet. You can see it plain as day. Yeah, I just I looked down there and I saw something white. I thought maybe it was a turkey. Straight white. <laughs> That's cool. Albino deer. That's pretty dang cool. I've never seen one. I've never seen one either. Is it a doe or a buck? Can you tell? A doe, tell. I think. trail still yeah we weren't hearing this turkey for a long time this morning Warp got up and walked out to the edge of this hill and he called once and he could hear him down this bottom he must have stayed on the side of this hill and down at the bottom almost and looped around us instead of coming up on that ridge where we were sitting this morning now we can hear him and a hen and they're down in this bottom over here they moved a long ways from where he was roosted assuming it's the same turkey it's possible it's a completely different turkey. Yeah. The turkey that we heard is going around the point of the ridge out there. Yesterday when Greg, Jake and I were in here, we were on the other side of that ridge and there's a bunch of scratching over there. There's a chance that they're heading that way, but we're just kind of hanging tight here in case they start heading this way instead. I can see that bench trail right there. But like if that's what they're walking, we can use this road to move around them for the next several hours. They haven't moved very far at all. I think though when he hears it, he's gonna gobble back mm -hmm. as much as he's been gobbling. Yeah. <laughs>
no way. We can try to go at him a little bit. All we got today is a bag of little gray morels. If we didn't get those, we'd be some starving pilgrims. No doubt. <laughs> Running out of burritos. That's gonna do it. It's like 110 right now. But those birds were pretty fired up there at the end. Probably gobbled 15 times all morning yeah. over a period of six hours. And then in the last 15 minutes, he probably gobbled. 40 times. <laughs> two, two, two of them. them. Yeah. Were they were triple goblin over each other. It was just a yeah. mess. We obviously, we called up the one hen, and then as we were moving to these birds, at like 11.30, we bumped into two more hens down in here. These turkeys just end up bad. People get discouraged a lot, including me, when that type of thing happens, but we always get asked like, man, I got on a turkey this morning, he only got a few times, and he shut up, and I sat there forever. I didn't kill him, like what do I do? Well, there ain't much you can do with that. Yeah, I mean if that if that hen that did come in would have had a gobbler with her. Oh yeah, that would have been game over, but, but not the case. If we were in Kentucky where we'd hunt all day, I mean, those things business. might be in trouble. <laughs> or we gotta stop at one. That happens a lot when you gotta stop at noon or one. They get fired up right in the middle of the day. Cause them hens start breaking out a little bit and then all of a sudden it Remember how to get there? Yeah. All right, we're going after the bird that me and Josh and Jake roosted last night. Same turkeys me and Greg and Ted hunted yesterday where we saw that albino deer. He was up here gobbling on top of this little point last night, a bunch, right before dark. He's in a little better spot this morning than he was yesterday, so. We gotta hike up the top of this mountain. It's 20 after five. It's gonna get light in about an hour and 10 minutes. But I'd, I'm sure it's going to take us a half an hour or more to get up this thing. It's pretty steep. So we better get to trekking here. Did you think he was straight up on top? I think he's on top of it, yeah. But he, he drops off just one more step. I mean, if you can get to that rock, that's the place to be. But I don't know if you can get there. I'm assuming you can get there if you got enough low noise. But if you're going to go, you have to go now and get there. You and Greg go then. I'm going to wait to stay back. I'm going to try to stay back so I can pull him around this thing in front of you. Ted and Greg are set up at this big rock right here in front of me. The turkey is just over the lip. I'm going to try to peel around that rock and call down in here, see if I can bring him on that point. Yeah. 
Did we get him? Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> yes! 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 Look at that big old guy. <laughs> he, was right the, he was right behind the rock. He was right there. Shutting. That was shot. That boy. He's seating down the sucker. It's just just mm. tough, boy. I mean, that could do, I don't think that would have worked out nearly like that if we didn't have you back there calling. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Rooster just hurt me last night. You know, I, I got a good pin on him, I felt like. He came up here in the dark and got 150 from him in the tree. And we got all set up, waiting for him to gobble. And then I'm sitting just over the ridge and I just barely hear this. And I'm like, was that a gobble? And I had to do a double take like four or five times. I realized like, you know, if it's a gobble, he's just down. These stinking sharp ridges just mess with the sound. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> see him up there? I saw him. I, was I wouldn't say, want to see him like, either. There's like freaking 10 of them. Just I wouldn't want to see him because I knew you guys were on the spine and I was way over here, over this lip. When I got up there and called real aggressive at him, they were hammering right there on that bench. He was gobbling and then the jakes were gobbling too. Those jakes didn't gobble till later and they were just right here. Yeah. He must have been right on that point. Jake's down there with a hen. 
gobbler out there. There's another gobbler over here. Was there? Uh, I got up there. I was trying to get in a position where I could call to him forever, and I could not hear him. And I'm fine, and I'm afraid of get, getting on this top because the rooster right there. Mm -hmm. He's like, this thing came up quiet. I mean, after a while, it was like, it wasn't saying much. And I saw something moving. And I was looking at it, and I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure there's a turkey coming. And then he pops strut, and I'm like, oh yeah, struggle right down there. I mean, I knew y'all could see something because Greg's up here with the camera. Oh, it was it was <laughs> rough <laughs> trying to get high enough to film. Arms are starting to shake. I'm in a bad way up against that rock. I, I was looking at Don X last night, and I'm looking at the topography. I'm like, this ridge ain't but 10 yards wide. I said, I don't have any idea how this is going to work. But when you have a, another caller to move out in front of you to get him to pinpoint that sound, because... I mean, you guys were hid good enough right there. They might have come right up to you, well, seven or eight yards. But when you went up, they went right to where you called. Yeah, they were right over top of that rock, right where you called. I probably should have came right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was I probably should have came right there. That was a little there. scary because they were all going over the rock, and it's like they're disappearing, and then they pop up. <laughs> I could see you shifting around and moving that like towards the ridge. I'm like, they got to be coming up. I was up trying here. to get up so I could shoot down a little ways. But then I heard that hen up here. She was in the lead. I heard her yelp, and I called, and she yelped back, and I'm like, oh, crap, she's right on the ridge. So I just laid down flat on the ground and tried to bury my head behind the tree, and she was coming right down here. She had to be over there. Oh, right? yeah, she was getting close to me. <laughs> and I was laying down, I could see them two jakes behind her. I'm like, there's got to be a gobbler in the back. I was, I was getting nervous real quick when I saw her in the lead coming over. I'm like, I did not go far <laughs> enough back. She's going to run me over before this gobbler gets on this ridge. When I shot him, I, could, I didn't know what if I hit him or what. Because all the turkeys took off flying, I couldn't see him. He <laughs> was dropped and then started rolling down. That's awesome. Look at that big old thing. That's awesome. Nailed him, Ted. Made a perfect shot. How far away was he? 35? Yeah, right amongst 30? the rocks, yeah. Right, he's over the rocks all the way. You can see his top half and then I called him and stepped his face straight up. Oh, Shot him through that gap up on your left shoulder. <laughs> that rock's a killer hide. We saw that in the dark shitting up here. and It was like, man, maybe we should try to get to that thing. Chase these things in here all day yesterday. Yeah, and the day before that we did. Yeah. Yeah, you all did just over the ridge. It's a process, man, figuring these things out when you come to a new area. Heck yeah, I got them before the sun come up. <laughs> it's a good, good way to start your day. Hike a mountain and then shoot a turkey. Oh, man. It's amazing to me how well they can pinpoint that sound. It, it's just amazing every time, and it happens all the time. It happened on Patrick's Bird the other day where they heard that calling and answered it, and an hour later they came right to that source of that sound. And this morning when we set up, this is, this is why it's nice to have a drop back caller. Ted and Greg got at that rock. We could see it in the dark coming up here and, that, and knew that that would be a good place to hide. But these ridges in, in super hilly mountainous country are really sharp in spots, as you can tell. I mean, this thing ain't but six, seven yards wide. And if you're sitting and you're calling at your position, a lot of times those turkeys will come up and periscope right over the hill. And you'll either have to shoot them in self-defense at eight yards, or they'll pop up, they'll see you, and they'll drop their head and they're gone. So what I did was swoop around this hill and come up between these two rocks and call strategically in this position where I'm 35 yards from Ted and Greg. That way, if the turkeys come up here, they're at good killing distance, but they're also just far enough away from you guys where you can maneuver, and they're not looking for you. They're looking for me because I'm the one that called right here, and then as she's coming up, I'm calling back to her back over this ridge. So those turkeys are coming up and they're looking, their focus is down there. It ain't on that rock right there. But if you're calling at that rock, they're looking right up there looking for you the whole time. Yeah. Luckily he came up fast enough where he could get a shot at him, but that's the nice thing. And I'm always thinking about that. Your first series of calling where that gobbler answers you is real important because they just pinpoint that sound so well. Always trying to put them on a spot. That's the way I'm thinking about it anyway, is you got the shooter and then you want to put the gobbler in a spot where he can kill him effectively. Well, mountain bird, boy, he's a pretty one. A 
bought a Polaroid camera the other day because it's cool to have all these digital pictures, but it's always fun to go back and look at pictures that are actually printed off in a book. So bought this camera for like 120 bucks, something like that, and got the film for it. So now we're going gonna retro, going retro, going back, back in time, really. Gonna take some more pictures of this throughout the rest of the turkey tour. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, now we gotta go set up. We gotta go put it in front of the camera for a time lapse of it developing. It's there yet. I bet it is. I bet it's pretty well done. Looks sweet too. That looks vintage, huh? Hang on, don't move it. I'm gonna take a picture of it. Let's see the final result. <laughs> That's really cool. Vintage. West Virginia, first Polaroid picture. That looks like it would have been taken before you even born. Yeah, way before I was born. Everybody's gonna see that, they're gonna want their picture taken with it. <laughs> we just like run, run and gun all morning. An hour left, start calling from where we were, nothing. Start working around that pole, hit the call and he gobbles. Call again, he gobbles, he's like way closer. We still have a decent amount of time, probably half hour. He gobbles a third time as Noah and Strand are getting set up and I'm like, I'm like, like he's coming, he get ready. And I, I'm like, they're on the bend of the road where they can shoot down the bend. And Ben and I are, fall, are back around the curve. It's just like, oh, the last one. It's like, okay, this is money. I call some more, nothing. I call some more, nothing. Well, from their perspective, Jake leads the way around the corner. Look, look, look. Did he putt or did he just kind of walk away? Yeah, no, I keep putting. He putted. Yeah. Oh. So he dips away. He didn't so putt like a run, he just putted like, just started looking. So it's a Tom with the two Jakes. They drop off the backside of the ridge and start coming to me because I'm down the road. And then I'm talking, it is like as steep as it can be without right. it being a cliff. And I start looking at Ben, who's got the camera, my camera and the gun up there. So I start scrambling going back to Ben. And I look down the trail and I see Strand and Noah going up over the bank. So I'm thinking like, I mean, they're making a ruckus down there. I'm like, I'll just stay up there and die. I'm thinking, hey, that's great. You know? And Ben's, Ben's like trying to decide if he needs to get up and go over, but then it's like if the bird comes in between them, then it gets weird. But ben, and Ben's like hunkered down in the ditch. I'm going to Ben, and then I look up at Jan and Noah again, and they're standing up. And they're like, ah, like kind of waving to me. And like, Strand's like smiling, and he's just like, like ah, like Jake's. And I can tell that he's like, ah, oh, it's just Jake's. And I'm just like, no. He, I'm not kidding you. He's like right there from me. I can hear him. I'm like, right there. And Ben starts running to me. And I'm like, get my camera. You get him. my camera. <laughs> and I'm waving to him to Strand again. And I look over. I look at Ben. I look back at Strand. And Strand's just like, boom. Boom. Drops him out of the trip sky. Fell 150 feet. <laughs> I went straight waterfowl mode. I was like, we're shooting ducks in the timber now. This bird fell. I shoot that second one and I just hear. And the bird just goes. Whoa. The bird is out. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this spring's Turkey Tour episodes. Like I said at the open, we will bring you the rest of this content at the beginning of spring 2023. But I wanted to recap where we're at right now with the turkey research donations. So far in Kentucky, we've had viewer donations of $14,130. 4500 of that came from the Quail and Upland Game Association down in Kentucky. Big thanks to those guys. I want to post a link to their website down below in the description where y'all can go learn more about them. That's a huge chunk of money and we really appreciate them coming to bat for turkey research. Then on top of that, our portion that we're donating directly from THP is $12,500. Since the beginning of the spring, we also pledged 10% of all of our merchandise sales to turkey research. That total is $5,230. That also includes about $500 from our buddy Sam Soholt over at Public Land Tees. They've been donating some money to Turkey Research as well. Big thanks to him, he's a good friend of ours. That brings our current total for Kentucky Research up to $31,860. 
We're not quite at our $40,000 goal yet, but I think we will get there within the next month or so and we can get some turkey research on the ground in Kentucky. In Missouri, the viewer donations total is currently $6,255. Our THP donation is $7,500, and our merchandise donation is $5,230, with another $500 coming from our buddy Sam Soul once again at Public Land Tees. The total for Missouri is currently at $18,985. That one has also fallen a little bit short of our goal, but that is over the course of the next two years that they need that 35 k in Missouri because that's an ongoing project. We're just wanting to fund it through the rest of the project. And like I said, that thing goes for two more years. So we'll have another spring hopefully next year to finish out that fundraiser strong and uh, fund the rest of that Missouri project that they got going on. It's a very important one, but can't thank you guys enough for tuning in this spring. We're gonna have a bunch more deer hunting content coming up on the channel here in the next couple weeks. And then I think we're trying to get back down south and go pig hunting with Ranch Ferry in June. So plenty of stuff coming up here on the channel. Appreciate you guys watching. Be safe out there in the woods. We'll see you.